China's manned space program began in secrecy. There was no live coverage of the launch. The first time the Chinese public knew of the event was a half hour after they had a man in space. Even his name was a mystery, but pictures were taken. Now they can be shown. China took a great leap forward when it launched a man into space. It was a remarkable journey. This morning, China's first astronaut came back to Earth. He had been launched into space the day before and completed 14 orbits. It was a historic moment. The nation collectively held its breath. China became a member in an exclusive club. It was only the third nation to cross the final frontier. China's journey into space began more than 30 years earlier. Its first steps had been shrouded in secrecy. In 1971, the best pilots in China were called up for a secret mission. They came from all over China. They were the elite pilots in the People's Liberation Army Air Force. Only the best would do. The space race was in full swing, but so far there were just two runners. The Soviet Union had taken an early lead when, in 1957, they put the first satellite in space. In 1961, the Soviets extended their lead by launching the first man in space. But the Americans stormed from behind to take the lead when they put a man on the moon in 1969. Late out of the gate, China had a lot of territory to make up. Thirty years ago, China created its first space program. The elite of China's Air Force were told to report for a secret mission. They were kept in the dark. They didn't even know where they were going. All they knew was the code name of their mission. It was called Dawn. They couldn't even tell their wives what they would be doing. It was the height of the Cultural Revolution when the thoughts of Chairman Mao were believed to surmount all obstacles. 88 pilots were ordered to report to a military hospital in Beijing, armed only with their copies of Mao's Little Red Book they didn't know what to expect. The pilots were completely isolated from other patients in the hospital. They went through rigorous medical and physical examinations. 
Their psychology was tested. Instruction began in an unusual way. The thoughts of Chairman Mao drove China's first space program. His little red book was more important than any instruction manual, strength or skill. In April, Air Force Commander Xu Lan received a classified telex. It ordered him to report to Beijing. The first team of astronauts was formed on May 15, 1971. The original plan was to launch China's first manned spacecraft in just two years. A secret space city was built in remote western China. It was to be the home of the new space program. Progress was fast until disaster struck. In September 1971, the leader of the army was implicated in a coup attempt against Mao. He died while fleeing China. His supporters were purged. And their pet project, China's space program, ground to a halt. The team dismissed. It would be more than 20 years before China would again attempt to put a man in space. In 1992, the Chinese manned space program was relaunched. It had a new code name, Project 921. The search began to find China's first astronaut. The goal was to find a few good men. They would live and train in a new space city, built on the outskirts of Beijing. An initial field of 1,504 candidates was progressively narrowed down. It would take eight years to find and train the right candidate. He would be China's first man in space. China's space program is controlled by the military. It was the Air Force that selected astronaut candidates. And since it's the third largest Air Force in the world, they had a lot of pilots from which to choose. Candidates needed to be under 35 years old and have over 600 hours flying experience. The cramped conditions in the spacecraft meant that there were further selection criteria. Astronauts had to be a certain size and shape. To be able to fit into the space capsule, they must be less than 170 centimeters and weigh less than 70 kilograms. The selection criteria even specified what the pilots looked like. Candidates were told that only those who were decent looking need apply. There was even a regulation on how the candidates snored. <laughs> The selection and training of China's first astronauts took place in a specially built facility in a restricted area of Beijing district. 
Being an astronaut required more than just superior piloting skills. Astronauts are required to have extraordinary levels of physical and mental fitness. Over 1,500 candidates met the original criteria. They were first cut down to 600. Then they were trained and tested again and again. By 1998, the candidates had been whittled down to just 14. They would be China's first astronaut corps. The selection process was long. To find the best candidates, balance, motor skills, physiology, and psychology were tested relentlessly. Nutritionists kept strict control of the astronauts' diets. The 300 items of food on the menu were carefully chosen and even more carefully monitored. It was weighed as it left the kitchen and leftovers were weighed coming back. The nutritionists even claimed to have secret recipes to enhance performance. It took five years to make an astronaut. The candidates were subjected to a constant barrage of mental, physical, and psychological tests. Their workload was intense. They spent 1,600 hours just in the classroom. They spent even more time in training and in tests, working from early morning to late at night. Even more demanding was the physical side of the training. Astronauts practiced how to fly their spacecraft in many conditions, while they were weightless, and when they were subjected to excessive gravitational force. In order to prepare them for any eventuality, they had to learn how to cope with excessive noise, strong vibration, and oxygen deficiency. Just getting out of the capsule required special training. The intended landing zone for the space capsule is on land, but there's always a chance the capsule will land in water. The emergency drop zone is in the Sea of Japan, so the astronauts have to train to touch down both on land and on water. Before leaving the spacecraft, the astronaut must change out of his spacesuit and into a special survival suit. It's designed to protect the astronaut for at least 12 hours if he has to abandon his craft. The space capsule is buoyant. If it lands on water, it floats like a bottle. It's safe, but not comfortable. The astronauts continued flying, too. Around the world, astronauts are selected from pilots, not just because fighter pilots are in superb physical condition. Already trained in flying mode, they are experienced in making accurate decisions with split-second timing. The astronauts were trained to parachute as well. Not because they were expected to leap out of the space capsule in an emergency, but because parachute training was a test of stamina and character. Some of the most important training was also some of the shortest. Weightlessness training is central to learning how to function in space. The Chinese astronauts had to go to Russia to get it. The Russians artificially recreate the weightlessness of space in a specially modified airplane. By flying in steep parabolas, brief periods of weightlessness are created. 
The plane glides in free fall from a height of 10,000 meters. Each parabola creates a period of weightlessness lasting 25 to 28 seconds. Each training flight consists of around a dozen parabolas. And each astronaut went on four flights spending around a total of only 25 minutes in weightless flight in their five years of training. What looks like fun is actually a test of endurance. The alternation of extreme g-forces with weightlessness wears out both trainers and astronauts. Astronauts were going through intensive tests and training. So too was the hardware that would carry them into space. Although China had successfully launched satellites into space, launching a manned space vehicle was altogether different. Satellites only weigh a couple of hundred kilos. A manned orbital vehicle weighs eight tons. And it has to return to Earth. The first successful flying attempt was in November 1999. But more tests still lay ahead before astronauts could be launched into space. The astronauts' durability had to be tested as well. Even with its parachute, a space capsule falls at 8 meters per second. That's the same as a car hitting a wall at 28 kilometers per hour. It takes special training to survive the jolt. Like airline passengers, astronauts are taught the brace position. But unlike airline passengers, they have to use it for every landing. The forces at impact are huge. Those forces are replicated in training. The astronauts are tested at 15 times normal impact. To their safety, trainers first went through a 17 times impact test. Astronauts were trained for every eventuality. On survival courses, they learned how to fend for themselves in hostile conditions. Astronauts have a gun and a knife in the reentry module. They need them. Survivability was paramount. Russia and the United States had lost 14 astronauts in their race to space. China learned from their mistakes. A special escape rocket provided an extra margin of safety. It goes off with a bang, shooting the astronaut's capsule far from harm's way. that will carry China's first astronaut into space has been years in development. Called the Long March 2F, it is the cutting edge of China's rocket program. It's a brute of a rocket, capable of lifting the eight-ton manned spacecraft into orbit speed of more than eight kilometers per second. Yet, it is also a precision instrument. Its 50,000 mechanical parts must function perfectly as there can be no second chance. Astronauts had a Beijing home visit before the launch. Yeah. <laughs> 
The field of astronaut candidates has been narrowed to the final three. All are top flight Air Force pilots, but only one will have the honor of being the first Chinese astronaut. Photogenic Zhai Zhegang was not only top gun of his unit, he was also a poster boy for the Air Force. His picture was used on the cover of the Air Force magazine. <laughs> Young Li Wei's mother says that he dreamed of being a pilot since he was a child. When he was a little boy, he also said that one day he would marry a woman who can drive a train. Today, he is one of China's elite pilots, and his wife is a school teacher. Astronaut Ni Hai Zhang was so important to his unit that his commanding officer tried to get him to turn down astronaut training. Ni's wife was also opposed to his becoming an astronaut. She even threatened to divorce him. Ni won them both over and is today one of the last three candidates to be China's first man in space. The selection of which candidate will go into space will be made just one day before the launch. The physical and medical condition of the candidates is monitored until the last minute. In the end, only a few points separate the candidates. Centrifuge training is central to the astronaut's preparation for space. The spinning machine creates a g-force up to 15 times Earth's gravity. During the launch, an astronaut undergoes 4 g's. That's about the same as the maximum reached on a roller coaster. But on a roller coaster, it's only a few microseconds. Reaching orbit takes 10 minutes. The astronaut may be exposed to even greater g-forces. An uncontrolled descent can reach 11 g's. And in an emergency abort, it may reach 17 G's. Astronauts are trained in a mock-up spacecraft before they ever set foot in the real thing. It has two chambers, a large orbital module, and below it, a smaller command capsule in which the astronaut sits during the launch and the re-entry. The command module, which can hold up to three astronauts, is just six cubic meters. The orbital module is, by comparison, a relatively spacious eight cubic meters. Together, they are like a two-room house. The astronaut sits in the command module during takeoff and landing. On long missions, experiments would take place in the orbital module. But on China's first manned mission into space, the orbital module will not be used. The astronaut will spend the entire journey in the command module. Soon, the practice module will be replaced by the real thing. Although there has been speculation in the press, there is no public announcement before the candidates make one last trip. On October 12th, the finalists fly to Gansu in northwest China for their date with destiny. The Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center has been putting satellites in space for 20 years. <laughs> But this will be their first attempt to put a man in space. The astronauts still don't know who it will be. China is in the midst of the SARS epidemic. The astronauts take special precautions to protect their health.
这远乡的话呢，警力是确实是感觉到非常集中。呃，昨天呢，这个老总们在一起吃饭，又又讲到这一次这个船舰呢，咱们的产品呢是最可靠的。首长放心，我们有能力、有信心，一定能够完成任务。Assembly building, the manned spacecraft is joined to the main rocket. It's housed in a protective sheath called a fairing that will protect it on its way into space. During the launch, the astronaut travels blind, his spacecraft completely enclosed inside the fairing. The fairing will be blown off only when the vessel is safely in outer space. Then the manned module emerges like a butterfly from a cocoon to orbit the Earth. The last piece to be assembled is an escape rocket. It is attached to the top of the manned spacecraft stage. It's for emergency use only. In tests, it showed that if something goes wrong during the launch, it can lift the manned module to safety, rising 1.5 kilometers in just three seconds. It's like yanking a man up by pulling on his hair. It won't get the astronaut into space, but it could save his life. With only two days to go before the launch, there is time at last for some relaxation. While the last three candidates play, others are hard at work. There can only be one winner in this race for space. In a few hours' time, one candidate will learn that he's been chosen to be China's first man in space. There is no relaxation at the landing site. The weather conditions here will determine the launch date. The spacecraft can't be launched until it is safe to land. The nine recovery teams, four helicopters, and five mobile medical units have trained and trained again. Their job is to get to the astronaut quickly, get him out of the reentry capsule, and get him to safety. Just finding him in the vast grasslands of the Inner Mongolian landing zone will be a challenge. After five years of training, the end is in sight. The rocket is ready. Training is complete. From a start of 1,500 candidates, there are now just three finalists. Tomorrow, one will go on the ride of his life. have had one last home visit. Time to say goodbye. Perhaps for the last time. Now it's time to return to the launch center. The candidates have come a long way since they first volunteered to become astronauts. They have seen 1,500 of their comrades fail to make the grade. Now there are just three. They'll all fly to the launch center, but they still don't know which one will fly into space. <laughs>
At the astronaut's residence, tension mounts. When the word comes through, it's Yang Li Wei who has been selected to be China's first man in space. With four hours to go before launch, it's time for one last meal before China's first astronaut embarks on his mission. The launch is not televised live, but cameras do record it for posterity. It's a great event in the history of China. Fifty years ago, Chairman Mao complained, how can China call itself a great nation? It can't even put a potato in space. Now, China is poised to do what only two nations have done before. It is not a potato that China will launch into space, but a man. Although the public does not know that China is about to enter the age of manned flight, no lesser personage than the president of China has flown through the night to bid a personal farewell to astronaut Young. Astronaut Young will enter the rocket at around 6 a.m. President Hu flew to the launch center after attending the third plenum of the 16th Communist Party Congress. It's an important moment for him and for China. Yanivitunze 祖国和人民的重托坚决完成任务不如死命。The waiting is over. Five years have been spent training for the next few moments. Delegations from the three candidates' home counties are there to see them off. Astronaut Young is bussed the 1.5 kilometers to the launch tower.
光学 USB 雷达跟踪正常，遥测信号正常。It's a perfect launch. Television screens distort the reality of the launch. The rocket will reach a speed of 11 kilometers per second to escape Earth's gravity. <laughs> Young Li Wei is not moving. The technicians cannot tell whether the monitor is frozen or something has happened to Young. <laughs> When the visual link to the spacecraft's interior is restored, there is relief all around. China will officially enter the exclusive club of nations that have put astronauts in space when Young becomes weightless. The scientists calculate that that will be 600 seconds after liftoff. As the seconds tick away, excitement grows. Young Li Wei wasn't just along for the ride. He had a full schedule of activities. Young completed over 200 tasks on his space flight. He communicated 29 times with mission control. He recorded 38 minutes of video and wrote seven pages of text. Young ate three meals in space, including specially prepared roast meats, fish balls, and vegetables. He drank tea and fruit juice as a treat even ate small mooncakes. Although scheduled for five hours sleep, he only took a half hour nap. Young will be in space for 21 hours. In that time, he'll make 14 orbits of the Earth, seeing the sun rise or set 28 times. With all the tasks he has been assigned, there is little time to look out the window. While Young is busy in space, the recovery team is busy on the ground. The wind and weather charts have been poured over. Young's path of re-entry has been calculated and recalculated. The team gets in position. In a matter of minutes, their race will begin. It has been such a smooth flight that China's first man in space even has time for a personal call. While Young orbits the Earth, activity increases on the ground. The recovery teams move into position. The landing site is in Inner Mongolia, a vast grassland of sparsely populated rolling plains. When it leaves orbit, the spacecraft is traveling at eight kilometers a second. Re-entry has to be timed to perfection. There is no room for error.
回收两号，发现目标。回收两号，发现目标。It's a precision re-entry. After orbiting the Earth 14 times, the capsule is in sight of its target. As the sun rose in the east, Yang Li Wei's spacecraft touched down. After traveling more than 600,000 kilometers, it landed within five kilometers of its intended Inner Mongolian target. It was an amazing achievement, the perfect ending to a perfect flight. But Yang Li Wei's journey wasn't quite over yet. A helicopter rushed him to a waiting plane for the 2,000-kilometer journey to Beijing, where he was given a hero's welcome. 